Hi and welcome to another very exciting tutorial. Today we're going to focus on good programming or development practice and we're going to have a look at how we can use GitHub or Git as such together with Xcode. So we are going to have a look at the terms um, that are important when we're working with Git and we are also going to set up um, our own repository and we will integrate that into Xcode and from now on also every tutorial or all tutorial files that we create in that channel will be available as repositories on GitHub. So let's get started and first of all if we want to connect our Xcode projects with GitHub what we need to do is first of all have a GitHub account and second what we also need to do is create a new repository. So uh, once you're signed up and signed in we can create a new repository by clicking on this plus icon and then we give this repository a name so I'm going to, to call it simply git tutorial and then we will create that repository as public in our case and now we get this um, this URL HTTPS URL and we can copy that and later integrate that into Xcode so let's go ahead and uh, bring up Xcode and create a new project and what we want to do is creating a single view application actually you could also create anything else um, but just choose one of the templates and we will also call this um, git xcode as a product name and then we hit next and then you can also make this check mark here to create a git um, repository on your mac so make sure my mac or anything uh, will be selected here and we will simply put that on the desktop and we're ready to get started so let me make this a little bigger here and now to connect with our online Git repository or with our remote repository, what we want to do is choose remote source control from the menu bar. And then we have our uh, working copy here, which is Git Xcode. This is our project name. And then we can select configure Git Xcode. So this will always be um, configure your project name. And then what we want to do is select the remotes tab and click the plus icon here and then we will add a remote location which is going to be the address we just copied from github so we click add remote and press done so now that we are connected what we can do is make our first commit or we can actually the first commit was already done as soon as our um as soon as our project was created so the initial commit is already stored locally so what we want to do is push it so we again choose from the menu bar source control and hit push and then we can select our um, origin master here and push it to our remote repository so now that we connect this to um, to github I have to enter my github username and password so I type in Brian Edmund and my password and hit OK and now the push was successful and we can have a look at Safari and reload that and there we go there is our initial commit so now you when you're using um, git for the first time you may get confused with the terms because there are a lot of terms that might be new for you so if you want you can have a look at my website and there is a nice graphic that will illustrate some of these terms like the commit um, and the difference between commit and push so what we just did was we pushed our project to the remote repository here so every time you commit your changes Xcode will actually automatically make this orange arrow path here at the top so all the changes will be committed to your local repository and what you need to do in order for it to um, to get to your remote repository in our case on github you have to push it but we will come to that in a second so Xcode actually does the add step for you so it's you do not need to add anything to your index you can simply commit it and all is stored in your local repository so 
why actually using Git or in, 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 um, together with GitHub and Xcode? Well, first of all, it's good practice. Not only if you're working together in teams, what it also gives you is the security to go back to a version of your code that was working. So imagine the following. We will now simply do some demo stuff. You can do whatever you want. So I will just um, add a button to my view controller here. So there is the button. And this was my first change. Then I will go to my view controller and my Swift file and make something like print hello world. All right, so this is my app. I'm finished. I, I'm going to upload that to the App Store, waiting for review and so on. But okay, we have made some changes. Let's say this is really the finished app. And we want to, um, first of all, commit that to our local repository. So what we do is we go to source control and we commit that. And now we get a nice little window that tells us some interesting stuff. For example, if I select my view controller, uh, then you can see in comparison to our initial commit, what actually changed. So the comment disappeared and instead we have um, our print hello world line here. All of our files that were um, modified actually do have this little M here at the right side. Also, here in our project navigator, we also have this M symbol that tells us that those files, the viewcontroller.swift file and the main storyboard, both were changed. So once we go back to our commit, um, our commit control here, we also see these changes and we can see exactly what is going to change. So what I can do here is, for example, I do not want to, cha to change anything here, so don't commit this change. Or I can even discard the change here and revert it back to the initial um, to the initial line, which was simply that comment. So we want to make this commit now, and what we need to do is enter a commit message. So um, let's say added button and one line of code. And that's it actually, that's our message. And then because we also want this to be on GitHub, what we can do is push to remote and set this check mark here. And if we have a look at our graphic here again, then you can see that the um, that the actual process of pushing is optional. So when we do not set this check mark, we will only commit our changes to the local repository. But once we set that uh, that check mark, it will also get pushed to the remote repository. So this is what we are going to do, and we will simply hit hit the commit three files and push button in the lower right corner. So now we're uploading those changes and we're all done. So let's return back to GitHub and have a look at what changed. So if I refresh this, you see that we have two commits and we also can see what happened. So we added a button and one line of code. So let's have a look at that and let's see what happens in our view controller. And there is our code, hello world. So this is now also stored in our remote repository. And what we can do as well, and this is now where it gets really interesting, we have our finished version of our app here. It's on the App Store, and now we want to maintain it or we want to add new features. Let's say we want to add a map feature um, to our great new app, but we're not sure if it's going to work properly. We're not sure if we want to include it in the next update. So what version control and Git gives us is the opportunity to create a new branch of our code, which is uh, completely isolated from our master branch, which is currently um, on GitHub and on the App Store. So this is very good coding practice, not only when working in teams, but also when handling your own larger projects. So let's create a new branch for our new map feature. I'm going to select our project, uh, hit source control in the menu bar. And what I want to do now is create a new branch. I'm going to call this branch map feature and hit create. So now, as you can see, when you hit source control again, we're currently working 
on the map feature branch. So for my map feature, I am going to select the main storyboard and I'm going to add another view controller and put it somewhere. And I'm also going to add something like a map view. So there is our map kit view. Um, we don't need to worry about positioning. This is just for demo purpose. And because we have created a new view controller, we are also going to create a new class for it. So let's say uh, map UI view controller and create that one. And then let's add another line of code here, which is simply um, our map view controller. And let's initialize that map view controller and print it. All right, so now we have made some very important changes, obviously, to our app. Um, we have them isolated and we can later decide if we want it to be in our master branch. And we can now also commit that to our local repository and push it to GitHub. So once we have a look at our project navigator here again, you can see that we have modified the view controller and we have also modified the main storyboard and our map view controller was added since our last commit. So let's commit our changes and the commit commits the changes to our local repository. So now I will simply type in added map view controller um, and let's just keep it that simple. And again, we will want to push it to our remote uh, repository. And again, here you could choose what of or what changes you really want to commit. So if you don't want to commit this change, we could simply say don't commit. And then you will see this um, stop sign or whatever it is. And we want to change it actually, so I'm going to select commit again. And again, I will press commit for files and push. And once we're done, we can have a look at GitHub again and select our Git tutorial. And then you can see that we really have two branches of our code. We have the master branch and we have our map feature branch. And we can now go back to Xcode. And the interesting thing is now, let's say you are working on this map feature and you got a report about some bugs that need to be fixed really quickly um, on, your, um, on your app that is currently on the app store. So what you can do is use source control again. And I'm going to select the project here and go to source control and then I will switch to another branch and I want to switch to my master branch, say switch. And there we go. We have our view controller again and we have the possibility to see everything that was there. And as you can see, our map view controller isn't there anymore. And if we go into our, uh, into our storyboard, also the second view controller isn't here. So now you can make your changes, upload it to the App Store again, and if you're ready, you can then work with your other branch, with the map, um, with your map feature again, and do all the changes. And once you're done, what you also can do is go back to your project, and then again, use the source control menu, and then merge from another branch. So let's, um, let's keep that in mind for a second. And let me show you something else what's very interesting and very cool. Um, so if you've ever wondered what this third button here on the top right corner is, we're often working with the assistant editor, but this is also very important because this is the version editor. And what's cool about that is that once you have activated it, it looks actually like the assistant editor if you have two uh, code files open. But what you can do is you can have a look on two different versions of your code. So you have here the master branch with the local revision selected on the left side. But what you can also do is select another branch like um, our map feature, have a look at the latest commit, and then you can see what was changed here. And you can also apply these changes or discard changes um, 
from your viewcontroller.swift file. So this editor allows you to compare the changes in your different files, storyboard, project, whatever. But what you also can do is once you press and hold on the version editor icon, you can choose the blame option and then you can see who actually made the changes to those lines and when they happen and um, at which state with the initial commit or another commit. So this is obviously really practical when working with teams, but again, also when working alone, you can have the, the chance to um, better understand what you did um, even after months of not having a look at, at, at your code. And now let's decide that we want to merge our master branch with our fully working map feature. So again, let's select our project. We'll turn off this edit editor here. I'm going to click on source control. And then what we can do is use our working copies here, the git Xcode master and merge from another branch. And we want to merge from our map feature, of course, and hit the merge button. And then we will again, we get a nice overview of all the changes that are going to be applied. And this is going to be the change. We have the initialization of our map view controller and this print statement here um, that we will merge to our, uh, to our master branch. So we can simply click the merge button in the lower right corner. And as you can see, once you open up your, uh, your project folder, we have our uh, map view controller and also our second view controller in the storyboard in our master branch. And you can see that when you go to source control and then you can see here that this is actually the master branch. So this was a real quick introduction into using Git together, together with Xcode. And um, there are a whole lot of more possibilities using Git um, and improving your actual, actual development practice. So let me know if you want to see more of those Git videos by commenting below. So have fun uh, creating your projects using Git and also working better and more efficiently using source control.